Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Mike uh, Pisani with Alpha Shark and SmartOptionTrading.com. I hope you guys are all doing great tonight. It's Thursday, November 1st. I'm going to have a webinar tonight. And, you know, for those that joined me last Saturday, we did a really special webinar on the markets and trading this. And I thought maybe we come in today and take a look at a couple other things here. And take a look at the markets, take a look at some flow that's caught my attention this week. And there have been some waters that are pretty kind of good looking out there, the stuff you want to be looking at potentially. So let's jump into this and let's just jump into some charts and go from there. All right. Everybody good? Excited? Dead? I'm brain dead. All right. I want you to look at this chart of the SPY. When we did this on Saturday, we didn't know where we were going to be here, right? We didn't We didn't really know where we were going at that point, right? So, you know, here is Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. But, boy, kind of looks like a bounce, a big old bottoming candle now section, doesn't it, possibly? Right? Doesn't it, when you look at it now, compared to what we had? You have this big move down, and we've had quite a big move off the bottom already, um, even though it doesn't really feel like it, does it? Right? It doesn't, it doesn't really kind of feel like it. All right? Now, the reason it doesn't feel like it is because, well, there's so much stuff going on, right? And honestly, uh, who was trading full-time today and watching the markets? Was anybody out there besides uh, us, us uh, degenerates trading full-time today watching things? If you were watching it this morning, the SPY was about to break uh, on bad uh, manufacturing data. When what happened? Who was paying attention? Yep, Trump. What did Trump do? Trump, Trump and Z and, and uh, Trump and, and and Z or Z or Z, whatever his name. How do you say his name? Um, suddenly started a love of a public love affair. You know, the, the, the birds were chirping. There were hearts flowing off of both of them, talking about how they want to sit down and talk and have better relations. And that's all the market needed to hear to start a and, and to save itself, right? Does that make you, if you guys weren't paying attention? So really kind of interesting. And here, let's go to a five-minute chart in the SPY real quick. And, you know, I mean, literally, right here, this candle. You guys can see this, this candle. Breaking down, if you chase this short, God help you, right? And boom. So we had a nice bounce. Now, what do we have tomorrow morning? Yeah, Baba. Baba's big, but non-farm payroll, right? Non-farm payroll is tomorrow. And that's going to be huge for this market, guys. If that number comes in hot, the market's probably not going to like it. Um, you know, so the, mar the market definitely does not want a hot number. So, you know, we'll see. What have we done? We took back 270 yesterday and held it today and closed strong. This was an important spot on the SPY. Taking that changes the control of the chart, right? You can see the line set up. We've moved back up how I'm doing this. Next is 280. While you got some shorts covering here, you're not going to really start getting the real shorts to cover in this market. So you break above the 200 day at 276 and then 280. Without that, you're not going to get a, a clear signal. Does that make sense? All right. This was nice. But if you even notice today, you know, it had a hard time. It wasn't until the last couple of minutes today they were able to break 273, which every morning the last two have been saying it's the resistance. And now we're back below it and we'll see what futures bring. So futures, if you guys are watching, is down. And it's down because of this. This is Apple, right? If you guys haven't been paying attention to Apple, revenue beat, EPS beat, phone sales were light, which the market did not like. They guided low, very, they guided down for the next quarter, um, citing $2 billion of headwind in, current, in uh, foreign exchange fees. And the one thing the market really didn't like hearing is this is the last quarter they're going to break out unit sales. So from now on, you'll just get, you know, a hardware number, and that will be all phones and products, all their products put together. And the market did not like hearing that. It really didn't like hearing that at all. Um, so we'll see. But let's put this in perspective. And sometimes you need to go back and look at things and put in perspective. 
this is a yearly chart of Apple, right? Now, it didn't have the doubling like Amazon had, right, or some of the other stuff. But it was one of the few names, when you come into here, that had not sold off through this, right? Despite all the pressure on stocks for the whole month of October, this thing pretty much just went sideways. Put it in perspective. Last earnings back here, here's the earnings gap that never got violated, right? 197.31. You see my marker on there for me? I've never had that ping. Never pinged to me. So where is it going to open tomorrow right now? If the market opened today, it's, it's just right at the low from a couple days ago. It hasn't even gotten to the earnings gap or close to it or vi come close to violating it. So when I, when I look at this here, guys, I say, okay, this is really not that bad. All we've done is taken back three days of action. Does that sound, pre does that sound bad to you guys? Now, who knows what tomorrow brings, right? But at the moment, it could have been a lot bigger of a down move, and it's not. Um, so some other thoughts I have going through my head as I'm looking at stuff here today, all right? The oscillators and the stuff we like to look at are not working as good as they used to work right now because of the way we're going back and forth. So when I show these to you guys right now, you can see, I'm sure I haven't even looked today, but I'm sure we bounced. The NIMOT, which is the New York run, right? Look at this. We're ready to plus 98 today on this action. So they're not, they're not really, you know, the market's already gone from, we had a nice oversold signal. Now we're getting hot. You see how quickly this changed? By the way, this is the first time since September, right, that the oscillator has, I'm sorry, since August, that the oscillator has been positive. Look how long we stayed negative on this, right? Talk about change. What did the NIMOT do with NASDAQ? All right, big spike, 110, huge spikes, hot. Now, this is short-term, guys, so I want to put this in perspective. Short-term sentiment, right? Again, put the call, screamed hot again. Short-term, they screamed everything very hot today on this. Um, so what do we do here looking at tomorrow? First of all, you got to see non-farm payroll and see how that comes out, see how the market reacts to it if not. If the market is good, we're going to have ourselves a, uh, you know, if the market likes it, that could be where we put the bottom in at least temporarily. And again, we worry about the midterms next week. But if the midterms go well, the market might be saying, okay, we're ready to move on. We can only hope. So to put this in perspective tonight, I wanted to spend some time talking to you about flow that I saw that maybe could help you guys as you trade the next couple of days. All right, and so let's start off and go back in time. And let's start off with this one from yesterday. Let's see, what do I have? Let me grab a couple of them. All right. So yesterday, let's start off with IBM. IBM, this name has been absolutely destroyed, right? Looked like it was going to go up and fill this gap up here. Got into it and pulled bad earnings and since earnings has been straight down right huge move look at a weekly chart but a weekly chart it came into support and held Do you guys see this on the five-year weekly chart futures are up cool again i don't worry about futures till the morning arthur and the reason is is that uh we haven't had China open yet or Europe, and so much happens, and this so early, right? But I hear you. Good to see the tracking back up. All right, so IBM, you have a double bottom here on the weekly chart, right? A little bit it held, came in. So yesterday, sitting there quietly going along, and this is off my private Twitter feed, so you can see exactly what everybody in my service saw, so you know what they're coming in. So we're sitting here quietly going along, and then we see, where is it? Oops, wrong one. Okay, we see this little order. June 19th, 120 calls, 343. Guy shells out $200,000. All right, swept. Followed by this. This guy swept 7,600 more of these at $4.6 million. They opened above the ask. This was one of the most aggressive sweeps I've seen in IBM in a long time long time or in any name in a long long time right this guy took out all 
all offers to get filled. Took everything out, right? Came in. There's your first big missile, all right? Then they came in. They hit weekly 120s on that, a little bit of them. And then today they came back again and they hit the December 115 calls, small. That is the type of flow, guys, you want to look at here when you see a sweep, not a block, swept like that, not too far out of the money, in a good spot, right? A possible double bottom on a chart. That's what you're looking for, right? Does that make sense? That's the type of flow, wherever you're getting it from, or you're looking from, or you're getting it here tonight, this is the type of stuff you may say, Mike, IBM doesn't excite me. Okay. Paper trade it. Write it down. See how this guy does with it. Right? Yep, you saw it right here. He paid four sixty. I'm sorry, he paid uh six dollars, six oh four per contract. He went out into June, bought plenty of time. Right? So that's one. You guys good with this one? Understand why I like this? Now, I'm not sh I'm not ready to start swinging until after non-farm payroll tomorrow, right? Until maybe in at this point. So I'm not staying with it at this point. Does that make sense? And I'm not suggesting you guys go out and swing right now. I'm suggesting if you like this, you don't have to be the first one into it, right? You can you can watch this and get into it tomorrow or the next day. He bought it yesterday, Eric. He's already up. Uh, he's already up. He bought it yesterday into the lows. I could actually show it to you. He bought it. I think it was here. That candle. Around 2 o'clock. Again, the guy's going out to June. He's not worried about getting up or down a couple pennies on this stock, right? He's buying out to June. Does it make sense? He's he's not worried about if it comes in and retests the lows here. He's got time on his side, right? Lots of time. All right. Everybody good with me on IBM? Let's go to Twitter. Yep, he's betting that. It goes up massively. Or at least a good trade back up and tough. So we'll see. Twitter. Twitter has been trading very, very well. So if you guys have not been listening to me and I've been telling you this, you know, trading very, very nicely. Earnings gap didn't violate it, right? You have this gap here still, hasn't touched it. That's strength. In a weak market, this thing has been strong. Took the 100, 200 day, now testing the 100 day. Said everybody today it could really use an inside day and it got it, right? It was an outside day, but just a quiet day where it didn't push hard or let things cool off. It has a gap up here at 37.47, right? So you have a gap to fill, and that is likely our my next target for this thing is this 37.50 area. What I liked about Twitter yesterday was they're sitting here. Here, you can see it, you know. Third, Jan 36 calls, 40,000 of them at 230, 275, $11,000,000 swept. Uh, I think everybody else has sound. Anybody else not have sound? You guys hear me? Hello? Nope, sound okay. Yep, Steve, you have to reboot. Okay, thanks. So what this was, though, is, again, I don't stop when I see something I lack. I go digging. I make sure it's not tied to stock first, right? And they rolled out of the December 35. So they rolled out, but they kept the same amount of contracts and bought more time. Very aggressive. Thank you, Fozzie. Thank you. Very aggressive buying in Twitter. Does that make sense? So if you like this one, and this is one of my favorite names here, I like this for a move to 37. And then maybe this thing tries to go and fill this gap, right? But it'll probably be a little hot when it hits the gap. So expect it to hit it and cool a bit. Right. So again, Nice idea for a trade. Plenty of activity around it as well. They've been very active in Twitter, right? Um, but for the most part, you know, today was one of the quieter days we saw on it. Okay. Let's give you another name. Probably a name you haven't traded lately. Who knows what this one is? LB. Who's been trading for a long time?
LB brands, right? It's Victoria's Secret. Don got it, right? This used to be the darling of retail, right? This forever. This thing was one of the stocks that was incredible, right? Couldn't be stopped. Ran up to 100 bucks, And ever since then, look at this down, down move. Big down move. I very rarely catch much in the way of option flow in it, okay? Um, not, not, not much lately. And then yesterday, check this out. All right, check this out yesterday. All right, December, um, December 3250 calls, 2,500 of them come in. Then they add some more, right? A little bit more come in. That's some big size for LB. That's not small for this name. So you got to look at the chart. What do I like about this name? It's been strong in a weak market, like most of retail. By the way, the trade is very profitable already. This guy bought it yesterday. It's already profitable, right? Coming through this resistance zone. Gets through here, you have a gap at 34.35, right? You see it just filled this gap here, and now you have another gap up here, right? So put this on. If you like this one, this is a decent one. Probably if it gets in that gap, it's going to trade up. The next stop is probably the 200-day up here around 36. So something to keep your eyes on. Again, not everything is tech here, right? You got to look around, try different things. All right, let's go to today's today. This is not a trade I would touch right now, and I wouldn't know what I'd do. But Yelp has earnings next week, right? This name, another name that's been maligned, this thing was 100 at one point, I believe. Yep, 101, All right? Been came down and has been trying to bottom now for the most better part of this last year, trying to get going. Good earnings last time, popped up, finally filled the gap after looking strong here, and here it is coming in. So this was not, a, this was not somebody buying calls. This is somebody doing something different. Okay, this guy came in today, and he absolutely obliterated, way out of the money, November 29 puts. He sold them to open. They came in on the bid, 40,000 of them. That means he's betting that by the November expiration, this stock will not be below $29. He's willing to buy it, and he's taking the premium in. Now, it's a long way below here. But, you know, $13 move in this thing is not that far if it's really bad. So this guy's taking some risk, taking it. So what I would do is I would wait till earnings and see how Yelp responds. As long as it looks decent, I would look to try some calls off of something like this because this guy's betting that this thing is going to be pretty good. And that's a pretty big look into that one. All right. Let's see. What else do we have today to go over? How about this little guy? Not my favorite name in the world at all. In fact, one of my least favorite names out there. Oops. All right. Zenga. Look at this flow today. The June four calls ended up buying 25,000 of these things. Now, I don't like Zenga. And if I'm going to trade this thing, I'm buying the stock, guys. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I am not trading this with options. But post earnings. Looked weak. The guy came in and he loaded up on this. Now, everybody remember this day here? All right. Everybody remember this day here? This day here, there's a rumor of a, uh, there been a buyout rumor on Zenga, and then it came all the way back down. Somebody's come in and making a big long-term bet. If you like this name, not my cup of tea. It doesn't move fast. But if it wants to, it can run, right? Days like this, there's money to be made in it when it wants to go. This is something to take a look at. Doesn't catch flow like this very often, right? Again, look at the look at the flow. The guy's paying 38 cents on a stock that was trading at 350 at the moment. <laughs> so that's a pretty expensive bet into that name. All right. So those are some nice ideas for some longs. Um any questions on any of those guys? Maybe some a little bit of flow there to help get you going. You understand why I like them? Why I would look at those? Nothing on those. Okay. So 
at this point, I'm going to do a couple charts with you guys. Not much, and we're going to call it a night tonight. Uh, everything I had a non-farm payroll here is now, you know, we'll see what happens. And we'll go from there on it. One of the things that continues to worry me a bit is when you look around, is the financials are still not getting going, right? Oops, wrong charts. One sec. There we go. The fins still can't get going. They bounce, but no real power to it, right? So no real power in the financials yet. They're still not wanting them. Uh, oil put in a new uh, multi-month low again today. Not looking good here, right? Energy trying to bounce, but having no real power behind it here at this point. What else is out there talk, we've talked about? Biotech had a, a feeble little bounce into the market here. Nothing special, not as you know, not leading. That's for sure at this point. But definitely a nice little couple day rally off the bottom. And there really just seems to be a lack of leadership. Today was all about China names, right? It was all about China. So if it was connected to China or like Micron or AMD and the semis, those were the things they were looking at today, the things they wanted. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. I think you got to sit back tomorrow, see what the jobs report brings, see how the market reacts to it, and see how it reacts here to Apple at this point. So we're going to do just a couple of charts. You want to pull, call a couple of them out. Somebody I know asked for Ulta. I'd be happy to look at that one. I haven't touched this one in a long time. I, I used to love this name. Nice chart. Still can't break out of this after earnings move, though. That's the one thing that worries me. Do typically this thing's strong in this market. Um, not the best here, that's for sure. But looks okay. Uh, what's the weekly look like? Yeah, you got a nice little cup and handle on the weekly here, and it's just going sideways. You know, not that far back off all-time highs after being beaten up. It's not a bad-looking chart, bud. Not really, isn't. Kind of like it. Kind of like it. Kylie. Uh, I there's not been there's been puts and calls in. Um, FXI, Stan. Stan's asking about the FXI. You can see what I picked up today. This was late today. 7,000 puts bought on January 40 here. Uh, what has been seeing bull flow is Asher. Asher is another uh, a, a, is another ETF uh, for China. You can see what came in today. There were some sweeps into that, but they were really momentum. Nothing, nothing huge into it. The Kardashian effect, yeah. GWPH, at this point, uh, I don't know. Let's take a look. The pot stocks have had this huge run. You know, they may just need some time to cool off, guys. Um, not acting bad, right? You can see right here you have a long uptrend. So if you like it, you can trade against that, right? See that uptrend there? Roughly. So roughly against 130, if it stays above that, you can kind of try to stay in that one. Not a bad looking chart if it holds there. Nice look. Microsoft, you know, Microsoft, it's been a high flyer. It has, like Apple, it didn't really correct. So, oops. I didn't go back to the daily. Nobody told me that. So Microsoft, it's just getting its correction. You know, numbers were good, but they weren't out of this world, right? So it's just just wasn't enough to move the ne the needle, all right, at this point. So you know, nothing special, nothing wrong. It just wasn't enough here. Held the 200 day, and as long as it's you know, if it held there, this can maybe start to build. It's just not ready to go yet. It just wasn't in play at this point.
Sorry, having issues with the scroll on the text. Give me a sec. All right, there. Uh, tech, because tech was probably the most beaten up, Nada. That's why uh, tech rallied more than anything else. Uh, eBay, Mario. I mean, eBay to me is not a name I would be looking at to play. They're just to me. There's just better names out there to trade. This thing is beaten to a pulp. I know its earnings were good and it gapped up and it's got a gap here. So maybe there's a trade to be have, and maybe maybe I should look at it. But it's just to me, this thing has just been destroyed. Um, and there's just since they spun off Payrap Pal, there's been nothing special about this name. That said, if it's going to be strong, it's got to get above the 21 day. Gets in this gap. Look for maybe a gap fill up towards about 31.26. GNRC, I don't know the. Um, you know, small guy, don't know much about them. Doesn't trade enough volume for me to trade it. It's an investment. So this to me is something you have to know about what they are and they're holding from a technical perspective. Whatever brought it down here had a nice move today. Whatever that was, there was some news, maybe earnings, and you have a gap ahead. So if it can get through that gap, maybe it can change its course. Took back some major moving averages. Now needs to get back above the 55 to get everything back in repair. Home Depot, Don, had a nice little bounce today in the markets. Um, but it's not leading. It's not acting special. But if you like it, I like the fact that it held 172, right? Held this bottom area. Uh, when do they report? They're late, Don, I think, right? They're, they're generally later. I think they're probably uh, late late November, if not uh, at this point. But that's a nice start. And if the diamonds and the Dow is strong, this should be one of the num companies that leaves it, Don. So uh, I would keep an eye on it. It's a nice look. It's correlated heavily with the Dow, though, so you got to watch that one. Uh, China names, you got Baba tomorrow. Baidu has some flow today. Um, JD, some small stuff, but everybody's waiting for that. What else we got? Uh, Tesla. Tesla uh, today did not act special. It was strong, sold off. They were buying weekly and, and some pretty big November puts on it into the close. Uh, there might be some news out there that they're sniffing out. I don't know. For at this point, though, guys, it's had a nice run. It's extended off the eight day. It could use a couple of inside days. It can use some rest. So, you know, if it can go sideways for a bit, it looks better. This name, when you chase moves like this, it tends to pull in your face. A la like here, right? Op like here, right? So you got to be careful chasing it. That said, it does feel a little bit different this time. Micron, one of my favorites. Uh, I didn't play it the last two days. Love it. Changing character. China name. No, it's not a China company, but it does a lot of business in China. So with the thought, it blew up today, right? Huge move. Some decent put call buying. Uh, where's my little thing? What I like today is we had this big, couple big sweeps into it. Forget all the little stuff um, here, there's a lot of little stuff coming in and out of it. Looking for two orders in particular today. Okay, this one. June 22 calls at 17.57, swept. They open at 1.25 million. That's likely David Tepper. That's what he loves to do in this name. He loves to go deep in the money and buy calls. We've seen that multiple times. So that's a nice sweep. And then you caught another nice one uh, here. Block, though, not a sweep. January 2020-45 calls. You see how it reacts here. This is our first time to the 21 day for quite a while now. If it can hold above here and get going, that would be great. Most of the semis woke up today. They let us down. It would be nice to see them turn around and lead us up at this point. Intel, same thing, right, uh, Don? Intel, uh, I actually like Intel a little bit better. Uh, only because Intel, to me, had the best earnings of everybody so far. It needs to get above here. It's got stiff resistance, been fighting here for the last two days on the 100-day. Then you got your 200-day. You get above that, and you have a complete change in character, and you start moving here. There were a couple orders into it today. One was decent, but nothing uh, absolutely special. Yeah, Arthur, I, they, we know that. They have a... They, 
in fact, if you look at my feed, you see I posted that. Right? So the, you know, we know we're aware of that. All right. Anything else? FedEx. Let's take a look at FedEx. Uh, UPS is UPS said today that everybody should expect a freight. Um, let's go find it. Let me give you the exact phrasing of it. Hmm. Didn't come up. I hate when Twitter, when you search, it doesn't come up. Let's see if I can find it here. UPS tells shippers to prepare for a freight, sti a freight strike, Wall Street Journal. So just remember what affects UPS probably affects uh, FedEx as well. Nice, nice oversold bounce. And doesn't look half bad here, guys. Really doesn't. Back above the 21-day. Again, all these charts are recovering a bit, but we need now to see the market give follow-through. All right, without some follow-through at this point, there's really, really, you know, you can't do anything. So you, you just got to wait and be a little bit patient. The markets look better here. And we could look at charts until we're blue in the face, but until we see how we can arm farm payroll and the reaction we get tomorrow, guys, there's nothing to be done until we see that, and maybe not even until after the midterm at this point, right, which is Tuesday. Luckily, it's right around the corner. All right, guys, I'm wiped out. I'm going to call tonight. I'm glad you guys joined me tonight. Thanks for coming on board and spending some of your uh, Thursday night with me. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, guys, the best way to get a hold of me is follow me on Twitter. I post tons of stuff out there for free on a daily basis, guys. Um, that's not part of my service. You guys know I even give information to my service here, but add options, Mike. You come in, you follow me there if you don't already. You'll get a ton of stuff throughout the day when you see stuff coming in. I hope you're all doing well in the markets and you're all resting. And uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings, okay? Enjoy your day. Remember, today is the first day of the new month. Like it. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, Stan. Thanks, uh, Victor, A.S., Don, Fonzie, Nida, Fozzie, everybody. Pleasure, Simon, you as well. I'll post, the re I'll post this up in a little bit if you guys want to rewatch it. Good night, guys. Night, Alex.